Okay. Hello, everyone, and uh, thank you for joining me today for this virtual town hall with the uh, Department of Veteran Affairs, Greater Los Angeles Region, and for taking part uh, in this important conversation. So for almost two years now, Americans across the country and across Ventura County have experienced really tremendous challenges, especially many, many of our nation's veterans who've been particularly impacted by COVID due to pre-existing health conditions. Uh, as chair of the House Veterans Affairs Com Committee, Subcommittee on Health, I, I worked to ensure the VA had the resources necessary to get through the pandemic. And I will continue to work to ensure that VA is meeting the changing needs of veterans and their families across the country, and of course, right here at home. I'm particularly excited and hope all of you are that the all new state of the art VA run 50,000 square foot medical facility is slated to open later this year. We all uh, worked together on this project and there's no doubt I couldn't have moved Congress to authorize this facility with, without you, without your strong voices, your strong opinions, uh, really to support the effort. So thank you. Of course, VA has been a tremendous, tremendous uh, partner in all of this. And as we work on the transition from the existing contracted out clinic in Oxnard to the new VA run clinic in Ventura, uh, there will be, uh, with no, without a doubt, uh, some hiccups. So I'm counting on all of you to make sure to bring any issues you face to my attention or to the to VA's attention. To discuss this transition and to discuss any other issues related to healthcare, I have invited Rob Merchant, Executive Director of Ambulatory Care Services for the VA Greater Los Angeles Healthcare Systems. Rob and his team are responsible for overseeing the current operation of the Oxnard uh, CBOC. They will be responsible for the transition to the new facility and for ongoing operations once it is officially brought online. I've also invited Jamie Cannon tonight with the Veterans Benefit, Benefits Administration to answer any benefits related questions uh, that you might have. Well, I've spent a lot of time working on the new cl clinic. I'm also working on what I believe to be important policy changes um, that are needed to ensure we keep the promise uh, we make to all of you when you signed up to protect and defend our country. Uh, the demographics of veteran population is changing with growing numbers of female and minority veterans and our Vietnam era veterans uh, are, are aging. And as our veteran populations change and grow, VA must also change to best serve all of our veterans. Currently over half of our veterans are now over the age of 65 and we need to take action to ensure this aging cohort of veterans can live in a dignified way and productive in a productive way at home with the care that they need. I introduced just this month uh, the Elizabeth Dole Home and Community-Based Services for Veterans and Caregivers Act, a long name, but a bill that is focused on helping our aging veterans and our veterans with disabilities stay in their home where they are most comfortable and where we know research shows we will have the best health outcomes. The bill will give veterans who want to stay at home with the resources and care they need to be able to make a choice of their care at home or a nursing home away from home. And I think I know what most uh, would choose. This past January marked the one year anniversary of the passage of the Deborah Sampson Act. Again, uh, important legislation I spearheaded to focus on improving the quality and access to care for our women veterans. And most recently, I'm fighting for another piece of really landmark legislation, the PACT Act, which is comprehensive legislation to address toxic exposure and to ensure toxic exposed veterans, particularly uh, post 9-11 veterans, receive the benefits they are due now 
not 20 years from now. Um, so an important piece of legislation. In the district, my office continues to handle a, a number of cases for veterans and their families from benefit claims to metal replacements to obtaining service records. My office stands ready to help any and all of you. So I'm, I'm proud to say that to date, my office has handled over 3,000 cases and returned over $15 million in estimated benefits to our local veterans and their families right here in the county. So as we celebrate these successes, we will soon be celebrating and cutting the ribbon on a new VA community clinic here in Ventura County. Last June, a committee of local service members, veterans, and community stakeholders convened and recommended that Congress name the soon to open VA community clinic after Captain Rosemary Bryant Mariner, the first woman to command an operational air squadron. So I'm pleased to report, I will be introducing legislation to name the new medical facility after this amazing veteran who called Ventura County her home. So I'll stop here um, and I will now turn it over to Rob for an update on our, our new clinic. Uh, and then I wanna hear from all of you. And so a little uh, housekeeping here uh, to ask a question, click the Q&A box um, and enter your question there. Well, I know we won't get to every question and I'm sorry we won't be able to, but you can reach out to us at my office at 805-379-1779. So Rob, the floor is you, yours. Uh, please introduce us to your team. There we go. I do this at least once a meeting where I forget to unmute myself. Congresswoman Brownlee, thank you very much um, for hosting this this evening, for providing a forum to engage directly with veterans in Ventura County, and for your support of this new facility currently under construction in the city of Ventura. Um, it's really my pleasure to be with all of you tonight virtually. And while I really do welcome the ability to connect with so many people through technology, I really miss the face-to-face in-person interactions and really look forward to being able to get back to those uh, very soon, particularly when we have something so exciting to talk about, like the new clinic that you see on the slide there. Um, I would like to tell you who's in the room with me uh, in case there are any questions that I don't have the answer to, one of my teammates might. I have our Chief Veteran Experience Officer, Harry Robinson. Harry is responsible for the overall experience that veterans have within our healthcare system. I also have our chief patient advocate, Kevin Wright is with us. Our chief of strategic and facility planning, Alan Trin is with us. His team is handling all the technical aspects of the activation of this new clinic. And I also have our deputy medical center director, Mr. Mac McHenrick. And if I could just take a quick moment, I do wanna make a, uh, uh, a bit of a personnel announcement, and that's about Mac. Many of you know Mac. He had my job um, before I was in it, and he was promoted to be our Deputy Medical Center Director. Uh, Mac was a very important part of improving services to veterans in Ventura County. Uh, starting very soon, Mac will become the Executive Director of the VA New Mexico Healthcare System, um, taking leadership of that system for a very, very large area that serves veterans across the entire state of New Mexico. So Mac, we wish you um, very well. We thank you for your contributions to our healthcare system. We will miss you. And I know that I will personally miss you as a colleague and uh, mentor and friend. Um, so with that, uh, Mac is saluting, but uh, saying he's gonna demure from coming up to the camera. Um, so with that, just let me introduce myself because this is my first time engaging with many of you. I am Rob Merchant. Um, my title is Executive Director for Ambulatory Care Services, and that's a really long-winded way of saying I'm responsible for outpatient care, and particularly outpatient care at the sites other than our main West Los Angeles campus. Uh, I'm a veteran of the United States Navy, and I'm also an Operation Enduring Freedom and Iraqi Freedom veteran. And if you add in my uh, service with the US Department of State, I spent six of 10 years downrange between 2002 and 2012. So this work 
for me in serving veterans is really personal. I'm a veteran myself. I get my care here. I want to make sure that we're doing it, doing it right. So if I could have the next slide, please. All right, so this is our new VA Ventura Clinic. That's a rendering on the right-hand side of the slide of the interior of the clinic. And what's really important is the services that we'll be providing inside. So everything that is currently offered at the Oxnard Clinic will be available at the new facility. We of course have our primary care teams, which are the core of everything that we do, along with our mental health teams. Uh, we will have expanded specialty services to include dental, audiology, uh, physical medicine and rehabilitation. That's another long-winded way for most ways to say physical therapy, occupational therapy, those kind of services. Imaging to include ultrasound, podiatry, cardiology, dedicated space to serve veterans who are experiencing homelessness, along with uh, home-based primary care teams. And this is an important way that we will be projecting forward our ability to care for certain veterans for whom getting into and out of the clinic is a challenge. This is primary care teams serving veterans in their homes. Um, I'm especially excited about our dedicated women's health clinic. This clinic will have a separate entrance, separate check-in, separate waiting area. This is a one-of-a-kind, first one in our healthcare system, uh, and very proud that it will be uh, there in Ventura County and really honor Captain Mariner with the services that we provide to women veterans. Uh, so one point about our primary care teams, what's really important when we talk about primary care, it's not just the doctor or the nurse practitioner or the PA, there's a whole team of people behind that primary care professional. So when I say primary care teams, that includes people like clinical pharmacists, helping manage medications and dietitians. Uh, we are currently going to, we are going to open the facility, uh, replicating the six teams that currently exist at Oxnard. We have the ability to expand up to eight teams, which gives us room for at least 2,400 more veterans um, than we currently serve. If I could have the next slide, please. All right, so this is what the exterior of the new clinic building looked like yesterday afternoon. Um, Congresswoman, you were there on site in October with uh, Secretary McDonough when it was just all steel frame and uh, barely a roof on the building. Um, significant progress has been made over the winter months. You can see we're even moving in the landscaping now. Um, so really making good progress. If you drive along the 101 freeway, if you're headed uh, through Ventura up toward Carpinteria, you'll see the backside of this building on the right. Um, if you pass the miniature golf place, the Coca-Cola bottling place, this is on the site of the old Ventura County Star building. So right there, kind of across the freeway from the Kaiser Permanente building. So if you've been driving by that, you've wondered what that building going up is, that is your new VA clinic. If I could have the next slide, please. These are just some shots of interior finishes on the clinic. You can see that it's designed with high ceilings to take advantage of natural sunlight, um, which we are fortunate to have a lot of in Southern California. Um, that main picture on the left is the lobby and check-in waiting area. Uh, one thing that is different about this clinic, it is designed for what we call the packed model. And those are those primary care teams that I talked to you about. In this new clinic, the veteran who comes in for a primary care appointment will be in the exam room, and it's the staff that will move in and out of that exam room, uh, allowing the veteran to have a, a, a quicker, more efficient visit, and really putting the veteran at the center of care instead of the staff. So that will be a large change for veterans coming to care and for the staff who are treating them there. Um, let me talk a little bit about how we're getting all the work done that you see reflected on there. We have a couple of work streams going on right now. One is on the things, the equipment, the logistics needed to bring this clinic to life once the contractor is done building it. The other is on the people, and that's the people who are going to be working inside the building, treating veterans and serving veterans. So we're uh, buying the equipment. It is coming. 
um, to a warehouse in the Ventura area so that when those keys are handed over to us, we're ready to go. Uh, for people, we are in the hiring process. We have a strike team, they've called it, established with our HR folks who are building all the people that we need to go into this clinic to staff it, which totals, Congresswoman, I told you 120 the other day. It's closer to 130, actually, FTE. So that is quite a bit larger than the current, than the current clinic. If I could have the next slide, please. On the left there, you'll see some renderings um, from the architect and developer about how the clinic fits into the current, current space. That's the 101 freeway there at the bottom um, of the clinic looking toward the mountains. So let's talk about how we get there and what the time frame looks like. Uh, we're heading pretty quickly towards something that we call substantial completion. And what that means is the developer and contractor are basically done with the building and ready to turn it over to us at VA to bring it to life. We are anticipating that is going to happen in July. We did have some COVID related delays in the manufacturing of, of some of the equipment, the big rooftop air conditioners um, that go onto the building. Um, and, but we are looking at that at, at uh, July. What happens when the developer then gives us the keys we do a series of inspections to make sure that it meets VA standards. And then we really go into action. And that's putting inside all the equipment, testing the life safety, safety systems, making sure that all the staff is trained not only how to operate safely in the clinic, but how we want those staff to operate. So we are going to be doubling down during this training period on training for customer experience, for both our primary care teams and all of the individuals who will be working in that clinic. That will be as important to us as the training on, on the equipment, is how we interact with veterans. And I can't emphasize enough, what's really important to understand here is that this is not a relocation of a clinic from Oxnard to Ventura. This is a new clinic. And we are going to double down on that opportunity to really make sure that we are taking advantage of this fantastic new facility we're going to be so privileged to, to have to ensure we're taking care of veterans the right way. And if I could have the last slide, please. So as a veteran, what does this mean for you? If you are currently enrolled in the Oxnard Clinic, you're probably wondering, do I have to do anything? Do I have to call VA and say, hey, VA, I'd like to get my care at Ventura instead of Oxnard? The answer is no. If you are currently enrolled as a patient in the Oxnard Clinic, you will automatically have your enrollment transferred to Ventura. I do know that there are a lot of veterans in Ventura County who get their care in Santa Barbara or get their care at our Sepulveda campus in the San Fernando Valley. You may be thinking, boy, I'd like to get my care at this new facility. It's easier to get to, it's closer, it's got all the services I need. All that you will need to do when the clinic opens is let your primary care provider know that you would like to change your enrollment from your current uh, clinic to Ventura. Some of you no doubt have appointments scheduled at the Oxnard Clinic probably in September. And you're wondering, how will I know where I'm supposed to go? Well, you will get a postcard reminder that will tell you where your clinic appointment is and confirm the time. And then if you are enrolled to receive text messages from us on a system called Vet Text, you'll get Vet Text reminders of your upcoming appointment, which will offer you an opportunity as well to confirm your appointment or reschedule it or cancel it. And when you do get those opportunities to do that, if you're not able to make your appointment, please, I'd encourage you to take the time to cancel or reschedule so that we can uh, serve another veteran with that time frame. So let me just say this um, to close out, and then I really do want to um, hear from all of you. This building will be a game changer, I have no doubt. No question about that. But that beautiful building that you've seen images of and that is represented there on that slide doesn't do anybody a bit of good if we don't have the right people trained the right way to do the right thing. And as a veteran who gets my care in this healthcare system, that's my commitment to you. 
And if we do let you down, there's my contact information on the left, Mr. Robinson's on the right. We wanna hear from you. If we're doing it right, we also want to hear from you. That's really, really important. And when you get those surveys in the mail from us, you get those surveys in email, please take a few minutes to, to fill them out, to complete them and tell us how we're doing. We measure that. We want your top block. And if we haven't earned it, we wanna know why. That helps us get better. So we really look forward to uh, seeing our first patient in this clinic. We look forward to a proper ribbon cutting at a time that works best for the community. We look forward to a series of engagement opportunities with the community over the summer months to tell more people about what we're doing, the opportunity coming with this new clinic, and to make sure that everyone who has earned VA health care gets the care that they deserve. And with that, uh, Congresswoman Brownlee, I'll turn it back over to you. Well, uh, thank you, Rob. Um, thank you very much for that. And I too want to get to the questions, but just as a reminder that to all of you, this is a public forum and, you know, we've got lots of guests who have joined this conversation. So, you know, for your own protection of, uh, and your privacy, uh, please don't disclose any personal information. And again, if you have any specific concerns about a case or you have a health concern, anything that anything we can help you with, please contact my office at 805-379-1779, and we will connect you with a VA representative. So again, to ask a question, click the Q&A box and enter your question. So let's take the first question. Thanks. Great. So what we'll be doing is we have a couple of questions in the queue. And so we will unmute you to ask your question and then the Congresswoman or Mr. Merchant uh, will respond accordingly. Um, the first question is from Maria Ayala. Maria, we're going to unmute you and please ask your question. Yes, I was just wondering where, uh, I'm sorry, I got the answer already, but I was just wondering where the new facility was going to be located at, but I saw in your map where, where it's located. So my question's been answered. Thank you. <laughs> next question. Okay, the next question is from America. America, we're going to unmute you now. She's gone. Martha's gone. She's muted. I can see on the uh, panelists, I think. America, I think you're muted. I'll just ask a question. Um, America asked, um, thank you, Congresswoman, for always allowing us a space to get answers to our questions. Uh, will the new VA clinic provide our veterans with access to services which help overcome addictions? Rob? Sure, thank you. That's a really in, important question. And the answer is yes. Um, we will have a full suite of mental health services available uh, through our clinic, new clinic in Ventura, just as we do now um, at our clinic in Oxnard. As part of those uh, mental health programs also includes treatment for substance use disorder. Um, and if the, um, uh, the case arises to the certain level, we also have a substance use disorder tract in our residential rehabilitation and treatment program here on the West Los Angeles campus. Um, the next question is from Jesus Gutierrez. We're going to unmute you. Um, okay, I'll just go ahead and to just move this along. Um, I live in Ventura County. When I call the Oxnard Community-Based Outpatient Clinic, I'm connected to the LA Veterans Clinic. I think the question is, if you can answer that. Why is that? Why is that? <laughs> sure, and um, Jesus, thank you for the question. This is a common question that we have across the entire healthcare system. So let me talk a little bit about the why that is and um, start with the premise that I think that we can do better. 
Um, so on the why, across VA nationwide, um, within the last several years, there has been an effort to consolidate what we call call centers um, so that in clinical locations, the staff there can take care of the veterans who are right there in front of them um, rather than trying to juggle answering the phones and taking care of veterans at the same time. Um, let me clarify something uh, in your question just to make sure that we're all level set. When you call that 310-478-3711 um, number or you call what you think is the direct number to your clinic, it is ringing in a call center that supports the entirety of our healthcare system. So if you are trying to reach your clinic in San Luis Obispo or Bakersfield or the San Gabriel Valley on the eastern side of Los Angeles, you will also come to that call center. The goal of that is to answer as many questions as quickly and efficiently as possible and resolve issues that can be resolved by things other than actually speaking to the clinic that you need to. Now, if you um, need to speak to someone urgently, we can have our call center agents uh, raise that person, but I know that this is frustrating to many veterans. Uh, we also did have, and I'll just take this time to mention as well, during COVID, like everybody else, particularly during the Omicron surge, we had a large number of our staff who work and support our call center out um, because they were not able to come to work due to illness. As a result, our wait times went up. They've currently come down. Um, they're still longer than they should be. And you know that experience is, I can tell you that the average speed to answer is three to seven minutes, but if you called and it took you 10 minutes to get an answer or longer, that's, that's the, the time that is your point of reference. And I recognize that. I would encourage people who are trying to reach us to do so earlier in the morning or later in the evening. The wait times are shorter during that times. Um, we are going to be working on a, on a telephone improvement project um, this year to improve not only the customer service that our agents provide, but also how we interact with the veterans and route those calls to get to the right place at the right time. Sometimes calls are coming in saying, are you open on President's Day, for example? Those are calls that can be quickly answered in a call center rather than taking the time of a clerk who's in, in a clinic. But I recognize the problem. Uh, when Harry first joined us here as our chief experience officer a couple of months ago, one of the things my boss tagged me with to tag Harry with was, quote, fix the phones. Um, so we are working on that as a priority this year. Well, I, I, I can speak for uh, my veterans here in the county that this is probably their number one uh, uh, area of frustration is, is the phones. Um, and, uh, so if we can, you know, if we can, if we can work it out and improve upon, I, you know, um, I, I hope we will be able to, cause I think everything else, um, you know, is relatively good. It's just this frustration that I can't talk to a, a real person who knows what's going on, so forth and so on. And as you said, kind of the back and forth, um, between the VA, they call, you know, you miss calls, so forth and so on. It can just get, it can get very, very, very frustrating. So, um, so thank you for that. Ne next question. Hey, the next question is from Mr. David Gilbertson. David, um, we just gave you permissions to unmute yourself. So um, let's see if we can, if you can do that. I think I've done it. There you go. <laughs> Well, let me lead off by thanking you, Congresswoman Brownlee, for your leadership on veterans issues, uh, not only this VA facility, but so many others. You're a real blessing to have as our representative in Ventura County. Uh, Rob, thank you for taking time to, to um, be here for this webinar. Um, I'm a Vietnam vet, um, but I have friends who were experienced or, or experience, uh, you know, health problems from Agent Orange, no surprise. Um, and I lost my close neighbor to the disease of Agent Orange cancer. So now in this, I applaud Representative Brownlee and all the other Congress members 
in the House for voting for the PACT Act on burn pits and other toxic chemical exposure. So I don't know if we have a comparable bill in the Senate, uh, how quickly this can move through the legislative process and get signed by President Biden. But these vets need action now. Their health is in jeopardy. Um, so anything that can be done to care for those currently in the VA, even though the legislation has not passed, is that possible? Uh, well, I'll let you take the first part of that question and I'll take the second part in terms of the PACT Act and its place in Congress. Rob? Well, thank Mr. Gilbertson, um, thank you. As, as an Iraq war veteran, I certainly appreciate the need. And when I had the great honor of working for Secretary Eric Shinseki, um, I can't tell you the number of funerals that um, I watched him attend for his fellow Vietnam veterans who were um, passing away from cancer. So this is an important issue and I really uh, look forward to uh, Congress taking the appropriate action from Congress. Well, um, David, thanks, you know, thanks for the question. And um, I, you know, we continually uh, work in Congress for our Vietnam veterans and the ancient orange uh, issues and trying to increase the number of, of presumptive disabilities uh, around ancient orange. So we will keep fighting. I, I promise you that. Um, the PACT Act, you're, you're right, you're paying close attention to what's going on in, in, in Washington. We passed the PACT Act, um, you know, overwhelmingly so in a bipartisan way um, out of the House. And as you said, it's a different Senate bill. They want to, you know, continue to kind of study the problem, which we want to just get moving on the problem. So um, I think the good news is that, um, you know, the Senate bill will probably get passed. And then what the process is, is then to go into conference. So we have a House bill and a Senate bill in the same subject area, and it will then go to con conference and we will work it out. But I can tell you that, um, you know, the, the, the leadership, uh, particularly um, Speaker Pelosi, this is a big, big priority for her. Um, and I have a lot of faith um, in, in what she can get accomplished. And I think the more we talk about it in Washington, the harder it is, particularly for senators to say, you know, no, we really can't do this. But I can't, you know, I can't promise to you uh, passage of the House bill uh, today, but I can assure you uh, 100 percent that there's going to be a lot of work and a lot of leadership commitment uh, to get this bill through um, and, and, and signed uh, and signed by the president. So, uh, you know, call your call your senators, uh, make sure that they're they're aware and and can insist on the House bill versus the, the Senate bill. So thanks for that, David. Well, you know, I'll call those senators. I know you will. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, our next question is from Carol Fix. Um, Carol, we are unmuting you. And so if you can go ahead and ask your question. Hi. Thank you for uh, being here. Um, yeah, I've gone to the Oxnard Clinic a couple times, and it's they're very out in the boonies. Uh, when I used to live in Ventura, um, so my question is: Are you going to cooperate, or have you? Um, are you planning to make it easy for transportation, like say from a, a transit center or something, for people to get? to the new clinic. Um, I sort of have given up on the Oxnard. I have private insurance, so I don't, do not use uh, the clinic um, on a, you know, I am getting my audiology uh, through the VA, but um, I was just, that was my question regarding transportation. 
Sure, Ms. Fix, uh, thanks for the question. And, and it's a good one. And one of the uh, great advantages of the new location is one, it's proximity to the freeway and access to more people, but it is also on yes. public transportation lines. Um, so that is important as well. I agree with you, the Oxnard Clinic, um, you have to be looking for it um, to find it. Um, the location is a bit far off the freeway and not as central as we would like. Um, I, I'd also like to mention that we do have um, the bus system that runs up and down the 101 freeway and the 405 and the five daily. A bus starts in San Luis Obispo, comes down to Santa Maria, Santa Barbara. It will stop at, at Ventura on its way to Sepulveda and West Los Angeles. I know that that can be a long day, but it is a way for connecting veterans um, to services. Um, that same service exists from Bakersfield um, down as well. Um, and another thing that I'd really encourage um, people and something that COVID has forced us to get pretty good at is telehealth. Um, we have a service called clinical video telehealth, which will allow us to expand the reach of the services we offer in the Ventura Clinic far beyond um, the actual facility where you can connect from within that clinic to have your retinas checked, for example. But we also now through VA have something called VA Video Connect, which is an app on your phone where we can actually provide clinical encounters without you ever leave it, having to leave your home. Um, so that is a really fantastic way to, um, to compress that distance that in the case of folks like yours are disincentive to getting VA care. And that's care, as I said before, that you have earned. So we want to make it accessible to you. Yeah, th thanks for the question, and, and I hope, um, I, you know, one of the uh, big requirements in terms of citing this location was, was public transportation, but, you know, public transportation, I, I get it, it's, 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 it's not perfect, particularly here um, in Ventura, um, and I, I hope when we open the clinic, we can kind of figure out a way to kind of connect our volunteers and people who want to uh, drive to make it easier for people who want to come to the clinic. Um, but on the telehealth piece, I have to tell you that I hear more and more frequently how much how, how much veterans really appreciate that and prefer um, receiving their health care through telehealth? I mean, you know, there, there wasn't many silver linings going on with the pandemic, but I think one of the silver linings is, uh, you know, Americans across the country seeing their primary care, you know, a lot of that was happening on telehealth. And the VA has been doing telehealth, you know, for a long time. But I think people have gotten more and more comfortable um, with the notion. Uh, they're certainly comfortable. Many are comfortable with it on the mental health side, but on the physical health side, I think have gotten a lot more comfortable too. So um, we want you to come to the VA. So we want to do everything possible to, to make it right for you. Our next question is from Anthony, uh, from Manny Gonzalez. Manny, we've given you permissions to unmute and if you can ask your question. Where are you, Manny? There you are. Can you hear me now? I can. Oh, hi. Well, thank you very much for hosting this meeting. I appreciate it. Both of you guys are doing a great job. My question is, what type of imaging equipment will you be using at the clinic? I, uh, I'll i tell you right now, I hate going into the MRI tube, so I stay away from that. Uh, I know there's the open type of MRIs and so on, and uh, just wondering if that's going to be available. Uh, thanks, Mr. Gonzalez. And I, I think we spoke in at Cal State Channel Islands um, that Wait, night a couple of Mr. months ago. That's Manny Vega. Um, oh, Manny sorry. Gonzalez is in the queue. So I appreciate that. Mr. Okay. Ve Manny Vega. And all then right. Manny Gonzalez will be next. Okay. All right. Um, so uh, to your to your question, um, we will have ultrasound at the new clinic. Um, we will not have MRI. Um, that is a very large piece of equipment that uh, would take up quite a bit of space. But if, uh, for example, open MRI or some other system other than 
MRI is what is appropriate for you. Please, uh, if you haven't, talk with your provider and we can see what the options are. Um, if we don't have them for uh, care in the community, if it's in your best medical interest. Thank you very much, I appreciate it. Okay, next we're going to go to Manny Gonzalez. Um, Manny, we're unmuting you. Okay, here. Yep, we can hear you. Oh. Yep, now he looks like he's muted. I'm unmuted there, am I okay? Yep, you're good. All right, well, anyway, thank you very much, Congresswoman Rob especially with our veterans, I think we should just forget about the Oxnard Clinic. Um, my comment is on the lobby, you have VA Oxnard. And would we appreciate you changing it to VA Ventura? Is that possible? Uh, sure, uh, good question, good catch. Uh, so the rendering um, that is available and has been in the public quite a bit of the interior says VA Oxnard. Um, and I actually didn't use that in the slide deck for that reason. Uh, that was the original drawing before the location was selected. Um, so right now, as of today, the clinic will be the VA Veteran Ventura Clinic, um, mm. pending legislative uh, action um, that the Congresswoman mentioned earlier. So it will be the VA Ventura Clinic. Okay, um, the next question is an anonymous question, and it asked, um, will this facility allow CHAMP VA, VA beneficiaries? Uh, thank you for that. And I'm gonna have to double check on the status of our current CHAMP VA enrollment. We address that as a healthcare system. So not just for this facility, but for all of VA Greater Los Angeles. I believe that right now we are not accepting CHAMP VA enrollment, but um, if there's a way for us to get back to you with a specific answer to that question, I'd like to do that. Okay, our next and question. If, if, I'm sorry, if I could just clarify, if you are currently enrolled with CHAMP VA, yes, but if it would be a new enrollment, no. So, uh, I'm having trouble understanding that as well, Rob. So in other words, if you're in the program, you can get, you know, children, spouses and so forth can go and get their health care. If they're not enrolled, you're saying that you're not sure they would be able to enroll through the clinic that they would, in order for them to enroll, they would have to do what? So for those people who are currently enrolled in CHAMP VA, they are eligible for care with us here. If you are not enrolled, we are not accepting new enrollments for CHAMP VA. Is that across the board? For, um, VA, for VA Greater Los Angeles it is. And this is, I'm a little on shaky ground here, so I'd, I'd like to get um, a better answer back to your staff um, and if there's a way to connect um, to the questioner directly. Okay, um, the next question is from Earl Whitaker. Um, Earl, we are giving you permissions to unmute if you can unmute your line. Um, yeah, I'll just go ahead and ask the question. Um, he asked, could you give more information about the homelessness program? What type of services um, will you be offering? Great. It's good, to, it's good to have you here, Earl. Um, Rob? Sure. Uh, so right now we have a team across our whole healthcare system, primarily of social workers um, who support the, the VASH program, the VA Supportive Housing Program. Um, those social workers currently really don't have a permanent home because there's just not enough space in the Oxnard Clinic. So we will have dedicated space, not only for those social workers, but for our other uh, teammates who support uh, veteran uh, homelessness or veterans uh, at risk of homelessness. That includes veteran justice outreach, for example, and those are our 
um, individuals who work with the court systems and with the veterans courts to keep people out of jail when there are other appropriate um, diversions. We also have outreach. These are the people looking for veterans who are homeless or in danger of homelessness and pulling them back and making sure that they have access to all those VA resources that can keep them uh, out of homelessness or stabilize them uh, through mental health, primary care, other programs. It's okay. important, yeah, go, next question. Okay, the next question is from Tina Knight. Tina, we're on um, muting you, or giving you permissions to unmute. Hi, good evening. Uh, Tina Knight with Oxnard College. And um, Oxnard College has a dental hygiene program. And currently we send our students down to the LA uh, VA dental clinic to volunteer. Um, and we'd love to develop that partnership at the new uh, dental clinic in Ventura. So we're looking for a contact of who we might get in touch with to, to discuss that and, and move that forward. Tina, I'd ask you just to um, write to me directly and we can start those conversations. Um, the dental service at uh, the new Ventura Clinic is a terrific additional service that we'll be offering. And again, my email is robert.merchant, M-E-R-C-H-A-N-T, number two, at va.gov. The next question is an anonymous attendee. Um, how do residents apply to work at the new facility? Good question, good question. So we are um, in the early stages of hiring. So as always, if you are not currently working for VA, um, keep your eye on usajobs.gov. Um, that is where we uh, source our hiring um, for all of our staff. Uh, we will certainly let the Congresswoman's uh, office know as those announcements um, become available. And also importantly, we want to make sure that we are taking advantage of the strong military community that exists in Ventura. Uh, there are also a lot of, for example, military spouses who have some uh, hiring, uh, that we have direct hiring authorities in many cases. We would like to support those folks as well. Okay, the next question is from Helen Zimmon. Helen, we're unmuting you. Hi, can you hear me now? We can. Hi, Helen. Perfect. So I wrote, I have a bunch of questions that I, I'm a hospice social worker and um, a lot of my patients need aid and attendance and I have mixed messages. Sometimes I'm told that it's a standalone program. Sometimes I'm told that you have to have a service connected disability. So I wanted to know if you could clarify for me. For aid and attendance, um, I'm not sure if my colleagues from VBA are on the line, but they are probably best suited to answer the eligibility criteria for aid and attendance. Jamie Cannon is here and let me unmute her just a second. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, great. Um, so uh, for, for just to make sure that I understood the entire question there, can the question be repeated? In the, Karina, can you? Yeah, it said, is aid in attendance a standalone program and can any veteran get it? So for aid in attendance, the benefit itself isn't uh, a program, but any veteran that meets the eligibility requirement um, on our side is entitled to aid in attendance. There would be requirements for a disability that's rated at 100%, and then a need 
uh, for uh, activities of daily living, assistance with those activities of daily living. So for aided attendance on the benefits side of things, any veteran can apply. There has to be a disability at around 100%. Um, there are exceptions, but for the majority, it's 100% disability. And then the need for assistance with activities of daily living. Um, the program itself might, um, the term program might be more with the hospital side of when a veteran is service connected and they do require the need for aid and attendance, then I know the hospital will triage and uh, fit those programs on different tiers at different levels. So maybe that program piece is the treatment in the hospital after we in the VBA have granted the benefit of aid and attendance. But any veteran can apply. There's just an eligibility and a severity level of the disability that's required. And I, I would just like to add on this too, that the um, long-term care, the Elizabeth Dole Act that I talked about in my opening comments, um, that's exactly what it's trying to address is to address um, uh, at-home care and hospice care I'll, I'll, there, the VA has a lot of different programs for uh, long-term care. They have them for with disabilities. They have them just for you know aging veterans. But they're not programs that are scaled you know across the nation. So, um, but th that's the purpose of the of the Elizabeth Dole bill is to be able to any veteran who is disabled or a, a, a veteran who is aging to have that in-home care uh, that they need with the resources um, in, in the medical support that they need to be able to, to stay in their homes uh, to, and to have the, the dignity that they deserve until their time has come. So that is really the, pur that is really the purpose of this bill. And um, I, I've already talked to uh, the secretary about it. He's uh, very supportive of the bill. So we've just got to get it. We've got to get it through Congress. And um, I'm been assured that the president will sign it if we can get it through. So um, stay tuned. Uh, and if I could just add, for example, our home-based primary care, well, maybe not uh, reaching somebody who's at the level of hospice care, but these are other programs designed to reach veterans, to keep veterans, as the Congresswoman said, in their homes as long as possible. And I should also take a moment to mention that yesterday, the secretary did announce for the caregiver support program that the um, disenrollment of some uh, eligible caregivers and veterans that had been ongoing was going to be stopped and those who had been disenrolled re-enrolled. So more to follow on that. Yeah, I spoke with the secretary about that as well. So that was good news. Okay, and um, unfortunately, this is our last uh, question um, before we have to end our event. Um, but the next question will be from Sevek. Uh, Sevek, we're going to unmute you and if you can ask your question. Hi, thank you for taking my call. Can you guys hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you so much, uh, Congress Brownlee, and, and for uh, taking my call. Um, I have an outpatient physical therapy and chiropractic rehabilitation clinic in Thousand Oaks. And so I apologize if this has already been addressed. We, will there be physical therapy and or chiropractic services on site or will they be outsourced? Uh, we will have uh, physical medicine and rehabilitation in the new clinic. Um, I'm not sure about um, chiropractic care, but um, we will have physical therapy. Okay. As a follow-up to that question, we are um, contracted with TriWest to provide services for veterans. And it's, it's been generally good for the physical therapy side, but for the chiropractic services, a, co a company called Empower is a third-party administrator that's just, just want to put it on your guys' radar. It's a really difficult company to work with because they've tried to pull funds from our physical therapy services, which is already separately contracted to TriWest. So we're already, you know, giving, try, we're, getting, we're receiving a discounted rate for being directly contracted with TRICARE for our physical therapy services. And so they, it's, it's been a very difficult relationship, but you've addressed my question otherwise. And um, if there's any room to be of service in that capacity, um, we would welcome that opportunity. 
And and Rob, if it if I may get that email from you, you said one more time it was Rob sure. Merchant number two. It's Robert R O B E R T dot Merchant M E R C H A N T two at va.gov. If you leave off the two, it goes to an IT guy in St. Cloud, Minnesota. Uh, I will look into that uh, as well because, um, you know, I'm in touch with TriWest all of the time and this is new information uh, for me in terms of this group that you call Empower. So um, I will absolutely follow up. Go ahead. Uh, is that the last question? That, that was the last question. Okay. Um, well, uh, you know, I'm sorry we, we don't have time for more. You know, this is certainly um, a conversation that I would like to continue uh, with all of you. And I'm, I'm certainly looking forward to having uh, in-person meetings uh, with all of you very, very soon. So, so just, you know, as a reminder, if we didn't get to everyone's questions, to please email me via my website at www.juliabrownlee.house.gov. Um, and for more up-to-date information and announcements about uh, similar events like this town hall, you can sign up for my e-newsletter uh, on the website, and you can also uh, follow me on Facebook uh, and Twitter. Um, and, uh, you know, please understand that you can call our office at 805-379-1779 um, for any assistance that you may, may need for federal assistance with a VA or with any other federal agency um, for that matter. So uh, we stand uh, ready to, to help. Um, and we ask all of you to pass that information along to those who aren't here and, and listening uh, to let them know that we stand ready uh, to help them. So um, as we continue to make progress on the new VA medical facility, I hope you will continue to reach out to us with your views and your concerns. Um, and um, I also, before I close, I wanted to give a big shout out to Mac um, and, you know, certainly I, I just want to express my deepest gratitude for everything that you have done uh, for us here in Ventura County. Um, you, you've really made a big difference and we will be forever grateful and we wish you well in your new endeavors. Um, whatever veterans you touch in that will be quite lucky. So, um, you know, thank you for your service. And Rob, if you have any closing remarks. Uh, just to everyone, thank you for attending tonight. Uh, we look forward to hearing from you and thank you for your service, whether a veteran or family member, <clears throat> and thank you for allowing us to serve you. Thank you, Congresswoman. Yeah, thanks, Rob and, and Jamie and the whole uh, team that's here. We, we, we really appreciate you taking the, the time out. Um, again, to all the veterans out there, please reach out to our office. And I, I will just close by saying it is my greatest honor uh, to, to serve you in Congress. Um, and I, I look forward to working with each and every one of you. So thank you for that. And good evening to everyone. And stay safe.